My guest today uh, on this game day in the shadow of the big house is none other than Phil Brabs. Phil is currently the director for Value Chain Innovation at Ross, uh, the Ross School of Business in Ann Arbor, um, and has been in and around the Ann Arbor area since he came to school in 1999. We're the same year, uh, both looking good, I'd, I'd say. Engineering, <laughs> and, right? And Engineers. both engineers, both <laughs> engineers, yep. <laughs> Both doing non-engineering type things, <laughs> right. right? Yeah, exactly. And uh, the reason I wanted to have Phil on the podcast was because Phil has an amazing story that some of you may have heard. Um, it usually comes up uh, every football season, you know, at the beginning of the season. But it's such a great story. And I first heard uh, Phil's story at TEDx U of M, maybe the first year that he that that program existed. And I loved the story mm. so much. And then I haven't really heard it since. Mm. And I haven't heard Phil tell it since that time. Mm. And that was maybe less centered around the football and more like around the TED format. So I wanted to have Phil on to tell a little bit about his backstory, uh, tell this, this great, amazing story, and then, and then a little bit more about how that story's impacted him since then. So uh, let's get started from there. Uh, tell us a little bit about coming to Ann Arbor, <laughs> high school, and your first kind of steps on the football team? Well, I wasn't really recruited by Michigan, which was frustrating because I wanted to come here to study engineering and yep. and be on the best football team in the country. And that wasn't looking like it was going to work out for me. But uh, fate arrived, and I, last minute my mom sent a highlight film and, and a letter to Michigan. I was actually partying spring break my senior year. I thought I was going to go to Michigan State and walk on. Um, Michigan had no clue I was interested in them, and – uh, I'd never sent them anything, so they, they wouldn't have known. But uh, they were excited to have me, and they said, come down to Michigan. I got to meet with Coach Carr. He says, we want you to come here to get a to get a degree and play for the team. And I said, let's do it. Yeah. And so I, I came down my freshman year, 1999, uh, to play uh, with an amazing football team. My holder was none other than Tom Brady. I mean, it was just a, <laughs> a blessing to come to Ann Arbor in 99. That's crazy. So... Yeah, uh, you're on the team. You're you're an engineer. You're 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 just a student, but you're you're at the time uh, not starting, uh, and you are only kickoff return at that at the point, right? I was I was a walk on. Um, I was fortunate to play a little bit my freshman year, did some kickoffs, and then I started one game my my third year, my retro sophomore year. But I didn't see much action, and I didn't kick any field goals. Got it. Up until my fourth year. So, your fourth year, 2002. Yeah, that's where this story really. really your senior, started. your senior year. My se- no, uh, no, 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 my junior year. Your junior year. Is my oh. junior year? Senior know. year. It's if you're 99. Not yeah. Sorry, 2000. I graduated 2000. Yes, senior year. <laughs> we're old, man. It all blends together. Well, I don't know why you got. It was actually my retro. I junior really year. am just trying to extend, give myself an extra year. You <laughs> okay. Outed me to the whole uh, <laughs> listening audience. Um. So, <laughs> so, red shirt, red your red shirt junior, junior year. Yeah. And first game, you get the call. Tell us about that first kind of that, that well, call. Sp- and where, where spring I'm ball going. is a, it was a big competition between me and and one actually my best friend on the team, Troy Nienberg, and he was better than me in spring ball. I you know I, I he outkicked me, but the fall came around and I worked hard in the summer. So did Troy. I just did a little bit better during the, the fall camp. And uh, the day before the game, Coach Carr let me know that I was going to be the starter. Yeah. So I was hoping for a little bit more notice. So that's crazy. <laughs> so like you, you have no, you have no time to prep. Uh, mentally, I mean, other than that, no. But I mean, it's uh, it's like that in every position. I mean, that's the way they did it back then. I'm sure they do it now. It's you got to compete every week to win that job. Right. And I got the nod. At, yeah, not even 24 hours in advance. That's crazy. So day of the game, you're going in. Uh, any. You know, huge game. Obviously, uh, Washington was ranked 11. We Michigan nine. Was, nine. We were nine. 10. Not that I remember oh, all okay. the details. Okay, there you go. Okay. Uh, and I guess, I guess uh, it depends on which poll you were looking at. Uh, we had multiple polls at the time. I was looking at the AP. I guess. Uh, so yeah. So, um, but we're but it's a huge game. Yeah. Uh, you go in, and how, how did that first half turn out? <laughs> not what you'd want, you know, if you're a play sticker. So, you know, I was pumped. I mean, my goal going to Michigan was to do well in school and engineering and be the starter. I came in as a walk-on, which, you know, always felt like I was like 
you know, just a second class because yeah. I didn't have a scholarship right away. And so I was had that chip on my shoulder. I was going to be the guy. I was going to help Michigan win. That, I mean, that's what every Michigan player wants to do. They want to yeah. put on the wing helmet, and they want to help the team win. Right. And so I was looking for that opportunity, and I got it. And then the first half it happened. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the first opportunity to kick uh, came in the first quarter. It was a 35-ish yard field goal from the right hash. And uh, I missed it wide left. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't like obnoxiously wide left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it still went into the student section. It missed the net. I think they caught it. And so. <laughs> enough to get in your head a little bit. A little, little bit. Yeah. But you know what? My, I, 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 went, I remember going to the sideline being like, you know what? Everyone misses a kick. Yeah. I'm bound to miss a kick. Right. So my first kick I missed. Right. And it's the first quarter, so there's no impact on yeah, the game, yeah. as you can see. And we're playing way. well. I mean, I think we scored the first two touchdowns. I mean, Chris Perry was looking ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, we were looking awesome. Um, so then, actually, in the second quarter, I got my second opportunity to go out there as a place kicker. And this time, I think we're looking at a 42-yarder on the left hash. <laughs> longer. That's a little bit more legit. A, a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, the difference being that this one went wide left as well, but I think it went about five feet off the ground. <laughs> no. So the uh, ESPN announcers called it a wounded duck. <laughs> no. So it's like, as you can tell, I mean, yeah. my career at Michigan as a plus kicker yeah. was not off to great Luckily, start. Luckily, you couldn't hear the ESPN announcer. No, not at that so, point. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I heard my coaches, though. That's right. So. <laughs> so, and what was the score at halftime? Do you remember? Oh, gosh. That's a detail I should remember. Yeah, well, that's okay. We'll cut uh, that out. Uh, <laughs> we'll cut that question. I think we we'll were cut winning. cut that out, and we'll cut out how I couldn't remember what year I was a senior. And kind of, <laughs> both of those things would get cut. Uh, so, okay, so you, you go in, we're going into halftime. Obviously, this is one of those, um, you know, you've missed two. You're the starter. You've been working to this for the whole time. Walk on. You get yeah. there, and you go into halftime. But... You got you got a second half, so you're warming up. You're getting ready to go. What happens then? Yeah, I mean, as we mentioned earlier, you know, I hadn't kicked a field goal since high school. So here we are, four years later. That's right. And I'm getting my first opportunity. I miss. Get my second opportunity. I miss. I still haven't made a field goal in four years. Um, so I, you know, I go out to warm up. Actually, I got there early when the band's still out there. Yeah. Because I'm like, I need some work. Yeah. And so you know, I'm in the north end zone. I'm kicking ball after ball. And they're all going wide left, like every single one of them. Like I couldn't make it go straight. Uh, yeah. Worse off, wide left is where the student section is. Right. So sea of right. yellow is yeah. just catching my misses, and then they start to boo me. <laughs> every kick, I'm just getting booed. My classmates. Yeah, that's right. I mean, classmates. Yeah, the, the seniors that are. You're out there. The, You're out there. The seniors are sitting down. Yeah, yeah. I, I must have been not booing you. I don't think I must. I must have. Been. Okay. You're like, stop booing this yeah, guy. Was like, he's look, a student. Look, he's an engineer. We're going to we're gonna f- figure this out later. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, no. Okay. So so that's obviously not demoralizing. Yeah. And, and what happened after, after that point? Well, so then I start heading towards the sideline, and then my special team coach comes up to me let me know that he's going to go with the, my backup. Yeah. Troy right, yeah. uh, in the second half, which was 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 disappointing, you know, yeah. not 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 the way you want to start out, you right. know, your career kicking, right. you know, so, at Michigan. What, so and some relief, like relief slash disappointment. How, how did no? That play out? Honestly, I you know I didn't share this with you, but at halftime, I just had a strong conviction that the game was going to come down to game winning field goal. Hmm. Troy and and, and I, I was having this feeling, and then Joe Skuroy, who's my long snapper, came up to me. He says, "Keep your head in the game because it's going to come down to game winner." Yeah. And I was like, "Okay." Done. That's all I need to hear. That's what I felt. You, you validated it. Yeah. So literally in the second half, I'm sitting there thinking, that's okay that Troy's kicking. I'm, I, I don't know. Maybe it's going to come down like a 58-yarder or something. Yeah, that right. They're going to they're gonna have, have to have no yeah. choice but to use my strong leg. Yeah, okay, got it, got so it. So that, that was my mindset. I was like, you know what? This is, this is good. And, and yeah. you know, Troy and I were best friends. And so just, I'm not going to have a bad feeling if Troy's right. out there. I'm going to be cheering Troy on there. 100%. So. That's right. So Troy goes out there, uh, I, I believe, has his first kick only in the fourth quarter. Right. Basically with the game on the line. So how did that play out? Yeah, the score is 29-28. We're down, we're down a point. So we just need a field goal to win it. And so they, we, the, the office does a great job moving the ball down the field. We're in line for a 27-yard field goal, which you'll make 90-some percent of the time. I mean, you rarely will miss a 27-yard field goal. For, <laughs> knock on wood for all future kicks that are 27 yards. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I mean, it's it's like an extra point. I yeah. mean, it is. It, it's it's a tougher angle, but it's an extra point. And so Troy Troy trots out there and um, misses it wide right, and I think everyone's just in shock. Probably wanting to lynch both field goal kickers at <laughs> third, this point. Third missed field goal. Yeah, uh, they're they're doing the, the math. They're yeah. like, we just lost nine points. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. This wouldn't even be a close game if the if they no. 
So, but then there was, it was a, like a fortuitous uh, series of events because uh, obviously we, we gave up the ball at that point. Yep. But uh, got the ball back. Yeah. So there was a minute 27 left. A number of people started leaving. Not everyone stayed. They were like, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't couldn't blame them at that point. So um, we're down by one at that. Point. Yeah, still twenty nine twenty eight. And I'm looking at the I'm looking at the numbers, right? Being an engineer, math guy, I'm just running. I'm running my algorithm and yeah. saying, okay, minute twenty seven. We have all three timeouts. Yes. They're inside our twenty, I think, or inside their sorry, yeah, inside um, their twenty. So, you know, if we stop them, yes. we're gonna have some time left. A bad punt. We could get a field goal shot at right. this. That that's that's my that's what my algorithm right. was saying. That's right. <laughs> and sure enough. First play, stop them. Second play, they decide to throw the ball. We sack them. Third play, we stop them again. Timeout, timeout, timeout. We're getting the ball back. Yeah. I mean, with some serious time on the clock. I don't remember it's 40 or 50 seconds, but it, you know there was time to move the ball. And we run one minute drill, two minute drill all the time. Right. So there's we can we can make this work. And so right. they punt the ball, and we got the ball back. I think around our 40 yard line. Okay. So got the ball back, and you're thinking, uh, but at this point. It could be you, but you don't know for sure whether they're going to call you in or where that I mean, where that field goal. You're right. I, I I didn't have I didn't know for sure, but I, I guess I had this sense all second half that I was going to hit a game winner. Yeah. And so it's like, again, like as I'm looking at the field, it's like this this makes sense to me. You know, yeah. we got the ball, we move it 20 yards, yeah. hit a 50 yard, to get out of here with the W. Yeah. Like that's kind of the mindset. And so I'm just relaxed. Yeah. You know, thinking this is what's going to happen. Right. 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 And then finish it off. So what? So what happened? <laughs> so what happened? Well, a number of things happened. One, you know, we we, uh, we had a hard time moving the ball, so it wasn't easy to get that 20 yards. Um, at one time, it was fourth and I think fourth and one, and we threw the ball to Braylon Edwards on the left left side. And most people the game will remember it. Braylon just does this. It goes right, hits right, Navar hits him right in the hands, and he just drops it. And, yeah. and, and Braylon just does this. Puts his head down like he's yeah, like, I just, yeah. I dropped it. I lost, you know, it's right. over. Yeah. And then he, fortunately, we had a teammate coming the other side and jumped on the ball and they called it a complete catch. Yeah. That, and, was, and a fumble. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Drop and fumble. Yeah, yeah drop and fumble. That's right. Yeah, complete catch, fumble, recovered by Michigan. So heads up play there and, you know, instant replay wasn't in a thing back yeah. then. Uh, if it was, I'd be, better, I don't know what we'd be talking. I don't know what we'd be talking yeah, right yeah, now. That's right. <laughs> I'd be hiding my head probably. Um, and then, so we got a first down, but we still could not move the ball. Yeah. I mean, we could not hit a, hit a pass. And so there was uh, about nine seconds left. Um, Washington calls a timeout. So, yeah, Washington calls a timeout. I think nine seconds left. So John drops back to throw the ball again deep to get us in the field goal position. Because we're, we're, we're in line for a 59-yard field goal. So yeah. I'm thinking, okay, that's fine. We're in a, I'm in a 59-yarder. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, I'd like it to be a little shorter. Sure. And John overthrows everybody. And there's about five seconds left, but there's a flag on the field. Washington had 12 men on the field after oh. New Heisel called a timeout. And so I didn't realize this, but if you have 12 men on the field, it's a 15-yard penalty. Yeah. So don't do that. <laughs> don't do that ever, I guess. <laughs> and so they moved the ball 15 yards, and that's why we went from 59 to 44 yards um, before so the last So 44 play yards game. left, uh, 44, uh, 44 yards, and nine seconds left. Uh, five. five seconds left. It's gonna be the last play of the game. But last play of the game. You step up and so I get. They tell me get in there, and so I kind of walk in there because I'm kinda, I'm pretty calm at this point. I'm like, yeah. this is what's supposed to happen, and then like the, I don't know. If, and if, did you do you remember th- going back and forth with me? Like, is it gonna be me? Is it gonna be? Me? No, I always just assumed it was gonna be me. Yeah. And then I just, but it, when I walked in, it almost felt like I was just playing a script. Like there was yeah. a script that was already already written, and I was just the character, and right. they're just telling me what to do, and right. I know how it's gonna end. Right. It was really strange. Um, and so I head out there, I get, I get a pat by, uh, Bellamy and then, um, Navarre says something to me, probably like, don't miss this kick. No, no. He probably said something encouraging. He was a great teammate. And then I get out there, left hash. I do my normal steps back, say, recite my little thing in the head. And then, um, you know, I just, I blasted the ball Knocked right, it in. right through the middle. I mean, literally like if only I could have done that the two times prior, yeah. you know, but Nailed it, true. And it, you know, went through no, no time left. And I think someone, some historian out there could, could, could verify this, but I've heard that's the only last second win as a, with a field goal 
in Michigan history. Really? Only last well, second. You'd think you'd Will's, think we would have more last second field we'll goals. We'll shout out to uh, Greg Dooley from M. Victors. And okay. he, uh, <laughs> can he you, helped, he helped can me you, do a lot of can a you verify prep. that? Yeah, he helped me do a little prep work with that. He has an amazing article on this, so um, so that's uh, uh, we'll get him to verify that for sure. Um, so it's a, that's an amazing story, uh, and n- not only just because you know it's about football and a game winner, but because of the ups and downs of the game. And for you personally, yeah. having come in, not having kicked in four years, but with that confidence, feeling like you're kind of playing out the script when, you know, I think a lot of people would have been so dejected mm. at that point. And probably that confidence you're exuding or trying to exude on the mm. sideline is giving your coaches, your teammates confidence. Like, you know, like he's not down on himself. He's not mm. hanging his head. Uh, he, he can still do this. Mm. And, and, you, and you did. So, you know, we're... 17 years later now at this juncture we've already dated ourselves i just say I, I, now like now you just told no, everyone that we're knocking on 40 we so just told everybody dated ourselves so might as well just throw it out there so we're 17 years later and when you look back on it now do you do you feel like that was a life-changing moment it was an attitude changing moment for you or was it just a cool story was it just a cool thing that happened to you uh, that's a great question i i remember you you watching the film like i kicked it and then also i looked at navar and then I ran in the middle of the field. I'm like, I, I knew this was going to be a pitiful moment. I thought for Michigan and, and, and maybe our season or a game, I'm like, this just doesn't happen. Yeah. As, that was the feeling. I've been in a lot of sporting events. You yeah. know, I've played in a lot of games. These moments don't happen that dramatic of an event. Right. And so, and then, you know, I get back into the you know, locker room. We shower, get back to Shane Beckler Hall. We start practicing. And it's like, we're on to the next game. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. And so I was like, okay. So for a number of years, it, it didn't play much of a factor in my life. Yeah. Honestly, it wasn't until 2008 when I was diagnosed yes. with multiple myeloma right. and incurable cancer that I really started to look back. I started looking back for things to give me hope. Yeah. And that's, I'd say, the most, that's, that's when this moment, this game, yeah. started to, to give me some life again. 100%. And, I, and uh, it's, it's awesome to hear you say that because I, I think back at you know, I've had some impactful moments in high school or, or college that t- I only realized that they were impactful mm. 20 years later. Mm. And so to hear you say this moment that we all look back at now, it's like, must this must have been life changing at the time. Mm. It must have set your attitude or set like your your outlook on, mm-hmm. on success in life. And it only, you know, 15 years later, does it really set that. And, and when you're going through other, you know, uh, struggles and hardships and or successes in life, you know, that, that you can look back and use that as the the story that helps define you, yeah. helps tell your story. Yeah, I think, and, and, and it's interesting because it continues to, like, I feel like it's on repeat in my life, yeah. and I can't, like, I, I, I kind of wish it wasn't because, <laughs> you know, the, the, the narrative that continues to play out is that, you know, if you, like, in life, you're going to fail. Yeah. And that's where it starts. Right. Like, And it's three quarters, three and a half quarters of uh, and as much as I'd like to say, yeah, you failed in a success, success yeah. and you know it as yeah, an entrepreneur and, and in your life, and you could tell the same story. It's like, no, it's failure, 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 maybe success. Yep, success. Yeah, yeah exactly. And like, yep. and, and, and I, I wish it was, I wish it was just hard work, hard work, hard work, hard yeah. work, success. Yeah. It's mistakes, missed opportunities, yeah. wrong opportunities, wrong relationships. That's right. And it's through those learnings that if, if you can overcome them, if you can, if you can with five seconds left, shake it together, yep. have a team like I did yeah. and coaches like I did who had confidence in me that support around you, then you might do something amazing. Yeah. But like, it's like average, 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 maybe below average. Amazing. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and it just, then, and it just happens. And then another three and a half quarters of, you know, and then, 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 then you're back on the same thing and yeah. you just have to trust the process um, of failure. And I, I teach this to my students at, at, at Ross about failing faster. And yeah. like failure is an opportunity for growth. Without that failure, you're not going to grow. Right. So after the game, I got pulled in front of the ESPN cameras and I was like, this is amazing. Like, this is like, I can't believe this. Like yeah. they care what yeah. I'm about to say. Yeah. Uh, what am I going to say? And they're like, and they quickly went to the misses. They're like, tell us, tell us about the two misses. I'm like, why are we going there? <laughs> well, let's <laughs> yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. the last moment. Right, right. But my response was, you know, Without those two misses, without those two misses, and this was relates to life, without those two misses, there would never have been the amazing make at the end. 100%. It wouldn't have happened. We would have won already. We, would not, we would, wouldn't have come down to this life-changing moment for me without a shanked, you know, wounded duck 100%. at the end of the first half and a miss before that. And I would say without those two misses, without Troy's miss, like, it wouldn't be the story it is. Like, like a winning field goal is great. Uh, yeah. And and that's yeah. and it's awesome and fun. But 
we're not telling this story yeah. unless it's all the hardships all that up dramatic. until that point. I think, I think that's my encouragement, and I think that's my message to others is too, is, you know, we, we're all living some narrative, yeah. right? And it's playing out, yeah. right? And so, like, we can get, like, we can get pulled back and pulled down by the yeah. failures or just recognize that, you know what, learn and grow from them, but th- this is part of my story. Just own it. Yeah. Just own the misses, and then... You know, one day you're going to get the, everyone, you're going to get a chance to make a kick. I don't know how big it's going to be, you know, um, but everyone's going to get their chance. You got it. You got to overcome the misses. Thank you, Phil, for joining us. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll close out this, uh, this session of Southview Stories and we'll just end it with uh, Go Blue. Go Blue.